Okay, iron oxide print. This really is a kind of offbeat process that allows you to print from an iron object or a solution and create some really interesting images. And I think of this as a record of time and place because you can locate, as Kathy did, artifacts from specific geographic locations. You can, I will show you in subsequent images, mark a certain place and do some types of interventions with this process. I first came upon this uh, with the work of Alice Fox. I was doing some contact print processes and rubbings and etchings, and I ran across an image in some type of search of her work, and it was one of those watershed moments that started to change my idea of creating an image and creating a surface. She here has used stitch, felt, and iron oxide print, which is the more technical name for a rust printed surface, in which she recorded the bricks of a building, a historic building in the UK before it was going to be torn down. And she did a lot of records of places and then put the work after their, um, the building had been torn down, installed the work in the space. So this was the beginning and this was an image that I looked at and it's a work in progress that she's creating here. And it became this wall um, in essence that really started me thinking. So this is a rust print on fabric, on cotton. She also installs pieces of textile at the ocean, uses rust objects, uses tea, uses uh, citric acid or vinegar, pre-treats the fabric, and then gorilla style, just lays it out here on the beach and at high tide as the tide changes, it actually creates the prints on the fabric and that's how these prints are done so yes you're learning a process but i encourage you as in the kind of context for this class to think about using geographic location as part of the work or a gorilla installation so this thing was i don't remember it was like half a block long in um when it was all put together and so it became a record of a certain time and place at a certain beach that was having a lot of erosion problems. So shortly after this was installed and she created this work, the beach, as you saw, it was changed with one of those big rock kind of erosion control walls. Jennifer Coyne is another artist that I met at a workshop in Haystack. And she uses paper and collaging techniques to create her pieces. She takes rusty implements and bundles them with textile, which is a process I was already doing and I saw her doing it and it just kind of validated what I was doing. And so think washers, rusty nails, uh, railroad spikes, uh, saw blades, in the next class, I'll show you some objects that I use, but anything that has a fairly flat surface so that it can lay down against the paper, if you're using paper, and make really good contact, and you can put weight on top of that, will create some interesting prints. But th something that's really important with this, and all eco print processes, and for those of you doing textile in the fall, something to consider is the aspect of time in the work. These type processes do not happen overnight. These processes need to cure. They take time. They force us 
to have to really reflect upon the work, sit with the work, and let the work start to really produce itself, which goes against a lot of our ways of thinking right now. Although, I guess we're having to learn patience in a pandemic. So, not great photos, actually, but for some reason, um, I've had, a, these were on one of my old computers and I wasn't able to access that, so I had these. But this is a runner that was created in a gallery exhibition. So now I'm showing you some of my own work using iron oxide. This runner was created over the period of three months and it used an axle from a wheel that was found on a farm in a geographic location that worked with the context of this show. And it was printed repeatedly over and over again. It was switched out every, I think I was doing these every four days and it was a record of time and so you're looking at this runner, which was uh, 30 feet, and it's made with the iron object. It's made with just your basic vinegar and water solution. That's gonna be a real um, asset to you in a lot of printing processes. No iron in this solution. You have your iron implement and a vinegar water solution and various kinds of tea. This is an image that was used for a series of exhibitions and it was called bind mark stitch the exhibitions and this is felt this is irish breakfast tea iron and vinegar and thyme and it created on this felt some really really beautiful images so this corresponds to the question Sue Ann had in the last class concerning rust flaking off. This image cured over a period of days and it was formed not by applying color to the cloth, but a reaction, a chemical reaction from the tannin in the tea, the iron oxidizing in a bath, of acid, which is your vinegar. Here's some other images of different ways that you can use this. Using implements found in a specific place on a specific farm. I had a lot of work that really addressed uh, geographic place and artifacts from a past generations. And farming was one thing that really has changed over the course of time is with the advent of agribusiness. And so small main farms and dairies have really um, suffered a great deal and gone by the wayside. That was some of the context for this work. And so you can see the furrows of a farm in the etching, which was etched on top of rusted iron oxide treated paper. The paper was Japanese handmade paper. On Arches watercolor paper, this is that same iron object, and it's basically a really heavy kind of washer kind of thing that I weighted down, but I used tea really, really freely, and it created with the really rusty object these beautiful pools because I used a lot of the vinegar and tea um, ink, and then I covered that with plastic and just let that set, and it created these beautiful series of prints. So the tea is basically used as ink and it thickens over time depending upon how rusty that object is. These are another series of prints. Some of you saw them last spring or at least one of them um, when I was talking about geographic time and environment. And so these were made with various objects, but uh, they give a sort of planet effect, and it was a saw blade, um, a circular saw blade, as you can see in the bottom left, and that was wrapped in a plastic bag with watercolor paper, tea, and again, vinegar, and I secured the actual tea to the paper with fixative afterwards, 
and it was a series of I called reactions because I did experiments with the amount of time I kind of let that ferment as well as the different teas and it was a series of about 20 huge circular prints for a show. This is the bundling process that you can use with textile. It's an iron print, it's a piece of hemp cloth, it's an iron object. I stuck some plant material in there just for good measure, which really didn't do a lot, but it left some marks on there. But I've wrapped that on an iron rod. You can see the handle of it. It's sort of some type of a handle for, for something. And I wrapped the fabric around it and also bundled the circular rusty object. I soaked the fabric first in a rusty, um, excuse me, a vinegar and water solution. And then I just tied it as tightly as I could, put it in a plastic bag and let it cure over time. Kathy has some rusty pots. Uh, she could take the fabric, dip it into vinegar and a little bit of tea or even open the tea bags after they're used and just basically mush it around in there and put the entire pot inside a black plastic bag and put that outside for a few days. And it's unbelievable what will happen. I did an entire residency where I was doing paintings and installations and performative work as well as uh, community gardening. But these are some of the implements that were found underneath a historic barn in this residency. And so I recorded them and the next year, the residency used those to create a book about the history of the Fiore farm. Joseph Fiore is a fairly famous abstract artist from the 60s and 70s. This one, self-portrait 2017. This is a photo polymer print. That's an etching print process that we will do spring 2021. And it is on rusted paper. Uh, you can do all kinds of photo transfers and things, but uh, it's just really creating a background first that, that I'm printing on top of. And the way that that activates that paper can be really incredible. And it can be used contextually if you're looking at a specific place or a specific community. There are ways to combine these things conceptually. Cloth vessels that held 100 samples of soil from abandoned main farms. And so this is basically a rusted textile fabric that uses a matte medium or a PVA to around a form to create a sculptural vessel. So I invite you to start thinking also in terms of three dimensions um, and how those, a gorilla installation, which those were used for, is to, to place things in a space. They were placed along a seaside shore, they were used as boats, they have had lots of different life forms, were very easy to create, but once again, to do the printing took time. 